Alright guys, it's PBS here, also known as a Polar Bear Sean. I'll be playing this gameplay called CPR Tears. Let's begin. The Mayfly, the bug that lives for only a day. Once it grows its wings, it's a great metaphor. You must have seen it before. My mind wanders sometimes. It's like being stuck in a room with the TV set to local news. Almost muted, but not quite. Or like reading a boring web page, because you're too lazy to click away. Having a voice in your head that won't shut up, it used to bother me. Listen to music on the way home, play a video game before you go to bed, kill time in any way you can, and it won't be so long. Do you wonder why we even bother? It's simple really. You pick up your books, stand up, put on your gloves as you walk through the early winter chill. Get home, make a snack, relax, and let the process repeat itself. Life is the easiest thing in the world when you think about it. But sometimes, memories resurface, the horrible red brown that encroaches on my vision, creeping from a box locked safely away. Oh, that was a weird music change. Uh, hello? Oh, it's cold. I hadn't noticed before, but it looks like it's snowing. Oh, damn that English. I out for that long. I'm gonna change that. I was out for that long. I was walking home from school a moment ago. I'm sure of this is a dream. That would make sense. But then, why am I wearing my school uniform? And why is my wallet in my pocket? Isn't that where you always keep your wallet? Well, that doesn't prove anything, but I might as well roll with it. It's seriously pitch black here. I can make out the snowflakes just fine, but nothing seems to be lighting them. Oh, don't tell me this is going to be one scary jump scare. I better start moving before I freeze to death. <sighs> ah! Ugh! Ugh! That light! It's... Aliens? Whoa! Let me just increase the video clock. You've come. Hold on guys. Go down the boy with the TV! Oh, she's quite pretty. <clears throat> you, you. Thank you for coming to see me. It's lonely here, you know. Lonely. Yeah, I can't deny that. A peaceful prison trapped in the darkness under this soft snowfall. But it's a prison. What's the matter? Aren't you glad to see me? I... That close up though. She looks familiar. I'm sure of it. The memory teases the back of my mind like a vivid lucid dream. But I can't grab hold of it. 
It's been such a long time. I thought you would have been ecstatic. Uh, uh. I open my mouth, but the words are lost. The more I search for the memory, the more her eyes bewitch me. The snowflakes land on the girl's hair. I force the first word out of my mouth. Who are you? Do you really not remember me? What a shame. We have so much to catch up on. Her smile is confident, mysterious, somewhere between angelic and doll-like. There's nothing to worry about. After all, we have all the time in the world. So then, who are you? She looks me in the eye and my heart stops. I'm the person you wish you never met. That's a bit creepy. She embraces me and my senses freeze until a color strikes my eye against the monochrome backdrop. Hanging in the stillness, a red ribbon drifts from the side of her hair. And on the inside of that ribbon, something is written. But just as fantastic as that is the fact that the words are scrambled, blurred, even though my eyes are only inches from it. That ribbon, don't you remember? It was your... Her voice fades away. I glance at the ribbon again, but before I can move closer, my stomach turns upside down. Ah! Ah! The girl's warmth fades from my arms. Ah! Is she disappearing? I'm this this whole world is a knife pierces my heart as I realize something. It's not this world that's disappearing. It's me. Okay guys, day one, reunion. Oh, that was such a very dramatic intro. Let's continue. Oh jeez, I have to do this. Oni-chan. Oni-chan, are you up? That sounds familiar. Mark, we're going to be late. My name is Mark. Oh. Are you even listening to me? Is this my sister? Yeah, yeah, I heard you. Jeez, it wouldn't kill you to be a little more gentle. Oh, so she's a rough girl. Gentle? Gentle? But I'm your cute little sister. I'm automatically gentle. What a... A beehole. That's like saying I'm automatically dependable because I'm your older brother. Wait. See? If you're not the dependable sibling you're supposed to be, 
that gives me the legal right to find new and exciting ways to tease you. And who was it that wrote this law? More importantly, I have a history test this morning, so I'll leave you behind if I have to. Pouting my diligently little evil little sister runs down the stairs. She's freaking evil. Can't can't she find a more normal form to, of torture? <sighs> ah, it's bright out, pleasantly bright. I can get lost just looking at that pale blue sky. Although I fear the cold that accompanies it. See, this is why I hate winter. Nature has no mercy for the northern hemisphere. Actually, does that make a difference? Technically, every country is part of a hemisphere. Meh. So there must be warm regions in the northern hemisphere. And even so, the southern hemisphere would be. Mark! I've been working on my. Hokuto Shinken What's that supposed to be? And I'm coming, I'm coming The last time she tried this I shudder to think of it OH MY GOD Is she doing some sort of karate lecture on my stomach? Oh no wonder my stomach was upset ah. Ah. Ah, I can feel the pain I'm pretty sure I know who my next practice subject will be if you make me fail my test. Isn't it usually practice partner, not practice subject? Oh great, now there's like this very funny, funny, funny tune to it already. So that's my sister, Rina. Since she started attending the same high school as me, Life has been hell. Well, maybe that's an ex exaggeration. She's a nice girl and all. She takes care of me, makes me lunch, forces me to buy her stuff. Ah, see what I mean? I'm out of compliments already. And that threat certainly wasn't the first. Ouch! Stupid razor. That was supposed to show me how to use this thing. Anyway. Rin is a strange girl. To put it nicely, she always rattles on about these crazy robot wars and melodramatic love stories that she watches, trying to find new and exciting ways to pull me into a world. I haven't figured out why she calls me Oni Chan though. Yet though. Is it ironic? Ironically. Uniro ironic. Uh, unironic. Ironic because she thinks I'll think it's sub subtly ironical. Unironic. related little sister but as much as I'd like to criticize her I can't complain she still does better than me at school I'm all alright I'm all done oh and she also does a better job of cooking and budgeting than me and she never sleeps in and the only time she's late for class is when I hold her back. Now do you see why life with her is a, is hell? Good morning! Did you sleep well? 
I slept perfectly fine until I was awakened by a certain someone. How could you say that? How could you say that? You should be thankful to have a cute little cute girl like me wake you up every morning. I just admit, that's actually quite true. You're not supposed to call yourself cute. Oh, come on, Mark, stop being such a dick. Is that because we're blood related and you're a. That's not why. I mean, it's a little vague, don't you think? And it's not very cute. True. But what if I'm only doing it to annoy you? Ah, point taken. Well, I do have to thank you for keeping me on my toes all the time. You're like my mother. It's what I want to say. But I imagine her twitching smile and life flashes before my eyes. I'm guessing that she's gonna beat her, beat him up. Sorry, you have a test this morning. Yep. I did a quick review with my friends yesterday, so you don't need to worry about it. I wasn't worried. Wow, Mark! Wow! Aww, is that your way of hiding your back shit? <gasps> I'm sorry. Was <clears throat> well, that even remotely implied? I'm sure you'll pass the test. I just want to make sure you don't forget anything and end up feeling for some stupid reason. Like that time I accidentally brought my Game Boy instead of my calculator. Hey, you, you play a Game Boy? That's me. Yes. Like that time. I was only 12. It was an innocent mistake. Yeah, that's true, Mark. You gotta give her that. Only well. Oh, come on. Don't be such a dick. Look at her now. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. Let's do it. I know, I won't. But aren't your exams coming up as well? Uh-oh. I was going to go over to Luca's house and study over the weekend. Why do I have a feeling that this is actually related to some other stuff? There's, there's, there's Rin. There's Luca. Or something like that. Even for you, that's not a very convincing lie. Oh, that face. Psych! But I did make that up on the spot. It wouldn't kill you to have a little bit of faith in me. If I said I'll study, I'll study. Really? You spend your whole Saturday afternoon doing math problems and rereading your social science notes? I'm tempted to say what notes, what notes, but that really isn't the problem here. Well, you, would you look at the time? Don't change the subject. He's not on, but we'll be late. Come on. Come on. Well then, we'll have to come here at lunch. Right, Onijan? Jeez! That smile is so much more undearing before you get to know her! Ugh. Although she's very cute. Made it! I let past the front door as the clock strikes 8. I inhale a lung full of December air. <sighs> <coughs> Oh wow, she changed quite quickly. Not bad, Mark. Not bad at all.
Actually, there's something wrong with this thing. Why is why why is my protagonist's name called Mark? And hers is a Japanese name called Rin. And I have no idea. You were taking so long with your bag that I thought I'd really have to put the gloves on. I thought you were going to leave me if I took too long. I, I was only kidding. Leave my only brother alone to walk to school on such a cold, cold day? I couldn't. And yet you can practice your anime fighting techniques on me? Well, when you look at it that way. Whoa! But you know, mastery of the martial arts can be extremely important. Hold on, hold on guys. Okay guys, I accidentally skipped one of the phrases, I mean the speeches. So it's something about being important and shit. Okay, Mark. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I know. Self-defense and all that. No, not just self-defense. It's an extra weapon in your arsenal. I'm pretty sure she's just making it. What? Okay, picture this. Oh my god, are you serious? She's teaching us this? Imagine that you're fighting against an enemy who already knows your techniques. And why would I be doing this? That... Oh, I realize it's really close. But the person challenged you because he kidnapped the princess. Use your imagination. Go to that map, if you. But what if the princess is in another cat? Mario Evans! Mario Evans! And you just have to go look for her. How? Anyway, let's say you end up in a farm that is coming. So now that your group is wrong with you. All they have to do is back up and start to kill for you. You also won't be able to walk past them and be attacked by one of them. But what if you're using a nuclear weapon with a lens? Alright, that's me. A well-trained warrior would be proficient, profi proficient with both bows and axes. But everyone knows that axe beats the lens. True, but then couldn't you just leave mag learn magic and attack from a distance? Oh come on man, stop doing this. Yes, but what if the enemy knows that you're a magician? You know that's quite impossible, right? A skilled axe wielder would eliminate you with a single strike. No critical necessary. So you're saying that an axe wielding magician Every magician needs an ace up his sleeve. An ace. And that ace is the is the mutual and oh wait, no, I'm doing it wrong. Oh, wrong one. Yeah. And that ace is the mutual box. That's one. You see, magicians draw their power internally and externally. Oh jeez, why why are you teaching me this? Isn't this what you're always doing? Magic I like oh jeez. Like sorcery flows through a natural internal circuit before it can be used in the form of a spell. The use of these circuits can drain much of an amateur's magical energy, resulting in the weakening of the magus's combat ability. In this scenario, even a trained magus would be susceptible to the attacks of an ordinary human. Much more so if said much more You mean you mean you mean much more so if said human is skilled in hand to hand combat though it is an unlikely scenario it would be prudent for a mega school And now with the info dumbs the all of you is possible Fine, I don't need you. She clicks the Twitter icon on her phone and runs away. 
Aw, oh, you made a rat. You, you made a runaway. Okay. I may have been a little hard on her back there. But this isn't a bad outcome either. You'd think the streets would be more busy in the morning. But no one ever passed by, passes by her. It's hard to get used to it. If you're from the city. But I've lived in suburbs my whole life and I like the peace and quiet. It's nice. Let your mind run. Let your mind wander to things you'd rather avoid. What? Huh? What was that? Whoa! I look around and momentarily spot a figure, but it disappears before my eyes. Strange, she looked familiar. Meh. Oh, the therm! Meh. Can't be that important. Two weeks later, I will look back on that moment as the first in a series of very, very silly assumptions. Oh, look, it's Lucas! Mark, you're actually early! A familiar voice welcomes me in from the cold. In front of me stands a young man I've known since the beginning of high school. But sometimes, at least I didn't know. I didn't know. One time is more like it. We have barely five minutes until the bell. There's still an accomplishment coming from you. Oh hey, did you bring your notes for the, for the presentation? Okay, so she saw the note. My other friend, William, voices her presence politely. Oh, like a friend of sister. Okay. Uh, well, Rin was on the computer until midnight, and my laptop needed charging, and then your house was constructed without power outlets, okay. Fine, fine, I'll print them out at night. Oh, that be There goes the bell. Ah, <sighs> can't believe I'm saying this. But I'm actually looking forward to a boring lecture, if it means I can relax. The teacher's voice drones on. So I'm supposed to imagine a teacher. Okay. And on. And. On. Oh, you need me to click two times just for that. I only know of one way to escape. Jumping out the window might have long-term consequences though, so I'll content myself with staring out it. Whenever I'm bored at school, I always like looking out at the weather and thinking about how I would rather be anywhere but here. Although, fortune has treated me with nothing but sadistic little sister and a pile of unfinished homework this morning, so maybe I'll better off in class after that. Mark! Am I hearing things? Mark! It's just like this morning! Is this some stupid idea of a prank? I'm sure it's just some kid with nothing better to do with their time, but... Whoa, that is scary! I'm sure it's just some kid with nothing better to do with the time but I can't forget that all right I know what I have to do pinpointing the source of the sound I spin around and glad at my target he's not getting away this time god that was a jump scare <laughs> uh, the class stares at me Lucas turns around and sit back down awkwardly Lunch, finally. No, that no, I don't understand that part. I really don't. Okay, how long? How long has this been going? 
No matter how many years have passed, nothing beats the taste of cold meat and fruit. Well then, I might have to stop the episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is the first episode of CPR Tears. And I guess I'll be seeing you guys next time because I have an exam coming up. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.